Today is the 29th of May, the 7th Friday of Easter. Our prayers tonight are found in Give Us This Day, begin on page 305. God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 119 How shall a youth remain pure on life's way? By obeying your word. I will seek you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your commands. I treasure your word in my heart, lest I sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips have I recounted all the decrees of your mouth. I rejoice in the way of your precepts, as though our riches were mine. I will ponder your precepts and consider your paths. I take delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Tonight's reading comes from the first letter of Peter. So I exhort the presbyters among you, as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ, and one who has a share in the glory to be revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The Word of the Lord. The author of the first letter of Peter addresses a group with the Greek word presbyteros. So actually the word presbyter is an apt translation. From our Roman Catholic perspective, this is actually the more correct word for those of us who are colloquially referred to as priests. But in the broader world of Christian believers and students of the scriptures, Presbyteros could also mean religious leader or elder or even in some cases bishop. Whatever word is used, every one of us has an opinion about the people who lead us in the church. We can all wax eloquent about our experience with the pastor or the chaplain or the rector or the parochial vicar or the bishop or even a presbyter whether it was positive and life-giving and inspirational or not. As one of those leaders, and as one, I'll have to admit, with a lot of opinions about many other leaders, tonight I'd ask you, as I'll ask myself, to remember that they, we, are human. And at least at the outset of our ministry, had every good intention to be energetic, educated leaders of prayer and ritual, hoping to be filled with integrity and aiming by the end of our lives, whether long or short, to become holy. 
quite the goal, isn't it? Peter simply asks us to be witnesses to the sufferings of Christ by eagerly attending to our flocks and by setting a good example. But none of us can do that without God's grace or the support of our communities. The next time you and I gather for evening prayer, we will have celebrated Pentecost. There will even be a special evening prayer on our Cornell Catholic website tomorrow night, Saturday, at 6.30, I think, at least Eastern Standard Time, celebrating the Great Feast. As you ask for a renewal of the gifts of the Spirit for yourself, may I invite you to ask the Spirit to also refresh and revitalize the presbyters among us. Our energies might have waned, and some of our choices might not have been the most pastoral, but we are still anxious to serve eagerly and effectively, and to become, with all of you, holy men and women. Do you love me? Tend my sheep. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Do you love me? Tend my sheep. Shepherding God, you guide your flock with loving care. In hope we pray, gather your people as one body in Christ. Inspire just immigration reform that protects the inherent dignity of all people as children of God. Gather your people as one body in Christ. Heal those who anguish over wrongdoing and give them peace. Gather your people as one body in Christ. Foster fruitful dialogue between Pope Francis, bishops, and young Catholic families. Gather your people as one body in Christ. Gathering all our prayers together, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May God bless us, protect us, and lead us to everlasting joy in Jesus our peace. Amen. As I mentioned, I hope you'll join us tomorrow, Saturday evening, the Vigil of Pentecost at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Time, whichever it's called, to celebrate the Vigil of Pentecost. It'll be recorded, so if you can't join us then, you can watch it at another time. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you Monday.